What's up everybody and welcome to another fun filled packed episode of Wrestling with Jonas, uh, episode 38. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. Yep, today we've got uh, quite a few things to talk about. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, some recent happenings on Monday Night Raw. I'm sure you all saw uh, Bray Wyatt's uh, Firefly Funhouse. Uh, so yeah, we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about that in a minute. We'll be touching on the um, the numerous WWE injuries at the moment, um, including a few that have happened this week that we can touch upon. Some that have uh, kind of um, happened at WrestleMania or just after WrestleMania. So we'll kind of touch on a lengthy list of wrestlers that have been out uh, for uh, a number of weeks now and uh, what sort of impact that's having on the, the weekly shows. Uh, we're also going to be touching on the weekly episodes of NXT and NXT UK. Uh, so once again, uh, another fun packed episode of Wrestling with Jonas. Um, so I, I just want to kind of uh, do a few plugs for the podcast, but, but before I do, you, you've probably noticed in uh, in previous episodes the odd kind of uh, woof and bark and howl, and I've got two lovely little dogs. Uh, one's a, a Cavachon called Luna, and one's a Cavapoo called Teddy. So Teddy and Luna, and um, yep, yeah, anything that kind of passes outside the front of our house, whether it be a bird flying overhead. God forbid if the postman ever comes anywhere near the front door. Um, a, a vehicle passing by or one of the neighbours. Um, how dare they kind of leave their property. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you may well have heard Teddy and Luna in the background in the podcast. Although um, I'm upstairs um, in my recording studio, otherwise known as my bedroom. And Luna and Teddy are down below in the living room. But uh, yeah, if you do um, hear the odd uh, uh, bark or, uh, you know, woof. Uh, two dogs going crazy that's just teddy and luna and if you want to know what teddy and luna look like uh, you can go to my instagram page that's instagram.com forward slash wrestling with jonas and there's some pictures of teddy and luna up there uh, so first plug out of the way you can also uh, uh, reach out to us on twitter uh, just go on to twitter and it's at with jonas underscore pod you can email the show as well if you have any feedback, anything you want us to kind of touch on as a, a topic. Um, and uh, yeah, anything at all, you can email us, um, wrestlingwithjohners at gmail.com. And of course, we got our Facebook group. Go on to Facebook, search Wrestling With Johnners, and that's spelled J-O-H-N-E-R-S, Wrestling With Johnners. Uh, find the icon, tap on the icon, and uh, yep, you can ask to be part of that group. It's all fun and games in the Wrestling With Jonas Facebook group. So there we go. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, yes, another quick plug. Um, Wrestling With Jonas is now on YouTube. We know that I uh, kind of put the, the weekly um, podcast episodes up there, but we've got our own exclusive YouTube exclusive series now. Started last week, The Wrestling Experience up on YouTube. Um, last week we covered um, a few interesting topics, uh, including kind of backstage shenanigans with wrestlers and uh, WWE personalities um, getting away with, with kind of poor behaviour behind the scenes um, and uh, all the various goings on behind uh, behind the curtain in the WWE, as well as um, all the kind of people, that, all the wrestlers, I should say they are people, but all the wrestlers that have requested their release from their WWE contract tracks of late um, but uh, yeah we've got quite a few um, talk for about uh, half an hour on those two subjects very very uh, interesting um, including talking about Road Dog uh, requesting to step down from his position as lead writer uh, from Smackdown we talk a little bit about uh, wrestlers that have uh, requested their releases such as uh, Mike and Maria Canellis, uh, The Revival Sasha Banks uh, and uh, various others um, a really interesting watch and listen there and we also talk about the first two episodes of Worlds Collide which were uh, Cruiserweights Collide and um, NXT versus NXT alumni. So uh, go out and check last week's episode, or the first ever episode, the premiere episode of the wrestling experience with me, with Jonas. Um, this is the, the, the usual podcast. Uh, we are fast approaching our six-month anniversary. Uh, we're fast approaching 40 episodes. This is 38, of course, and uh, you can listen to the podcast. Uh, you're obviously listening to it now, so you can continue listening to it um, on your kind of uh, podcast platform that you're listening to uh, us currently. Um, but uh, in case you want to try us out on other podcast platforms or when you speak to your friends and speak to your family about wrestling with Jonas, uh, they can 
can listen to us on uh, Apple Podcast, uh, otherwise known as iTunes, uh, Google Podcast, Spotify, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Anchor, Castbox, Stitcher Radio, YouTube. We are literally everywhere. Wherever you get your podcast, you can listen to this uh, this podcast, Wrestling with Jonas. And if you're listening to us on Apple iTunes, please don't forget to leave us a five star review. Uh, give us a bit of a, um, a shout out in the comments. Um, and uh, if you do leave us a five star review on iTunes, then uh, I will give you a, a personal mention on the podcast. Um, so, yeah, if you're listening to us on iTunes, leave us a five star review. Leave a little comment on there as well. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to give you guys a bit of a shout out um, on a future episode of Wrestling with Jonas. So, uh, with that out of the way, um, just want to say, uh, yeah, I hope you've all had a, a good week. Um, the first thing that we're going to touch on this week is Bray Wyatt's return to Monday Night Raw. Now, I'm sure that you all uh, watched um, Monday Night Raw. Well, uh, a lot of you did, and um, you probably noticed a bit of a, a character development from from Bray Wyatt. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's the, the new segment that kind of really sense. Um, the wrestling world and wrestling fans into a little bit of a, a spin and hot debate uh, was uh, Bray Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse. So uh, very reminiscent of Blues Clues um, and, and various uh, shows like that. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, our American audience have compared it to Pee Wee Herman and Mr. Rogers. Um, coming from the UK, we're not as familiar with those two individuals compared to our uh, American listeners, but it's only Blues Clues and uh, Rainbow and uh, TV shows from the 80s. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of a watch along now. So I've got the YouTube clip up on my phone, which I'm going to play, so you'll probably hear it playing. I'm going to talk over it and uh, do a little bit of commentary on um, on, on on the segment it runs for just over three minutes three minutes 18 seconds so i'm going to press play in a second and then we'll talk about it in a bit more depth afterwards um but this is uh, bray wyatt's return to monday night raw this past monday and uh his kind of new gimmick his new character um still bray wyatt um he refers a lot to his old character in the the segment but it's called uh bray wyatt's firefly funhouse here we go so a very child friendly PG intro there uh, with a very colourful background got Bray Wyatt coming through into his fun house uh, canned cheering from the children in the, uh, in the background so how I have missed you that we would be back together again someday. I saw it in my dreams. This is the Firefly Funhouse. And my name so Bray, is Bray Wyatt. Wearing uh, a red jumper, Yowie, wow. purple we shirt. So much fun here. This, this is plain my special slacks. place. And all my fireflies can feel safe here. And I cannot wait. So it's all fairly uh, family friendly so far. He ducks down, comes back up. The screen goes a bit shaky, and he's got two gloves on one saying hurt and one saying heal. Oh, and I want to introduce you to some very special friends that I've met along the way. So we've got Mercy the Buzzard coming out of the box there. We've seen him in a couple of segments in Monday Night Raw the past few weeks. Then we've got Peppy the Witch. So where we've seen Peppy the Witch now, in the past few weeks, uh, that's kind of sent a few a chills uh, down the spine of some man. of the, the watchers of Monday Night Raw. And yes, he did used to be a very bad man. Okay. Some boos there I from the that. children in the audience. But trust me, I have been barbarically punished for all of my wrongdoings. And that part of me is dead now. However, I do keep a reminder... So that not even in my weakest moments. Bray Wyatt I referring to his cult leader persona before when he was uh, leader of the Wyatt again. family. See? There's the cardboard cutout of uh, Bray Wyatt, his previous oh. gimmick as the, uh, the cult Wyatt family leader, of course. Now he's got a. 
like a chainsaw. Cuts the, uh, the cardboard standee of Bray Wyatt in two. That's not scary. <laughs> then I don't know what it is. So, let's stop that there. So, it was certainly a talking point after Monday Night Raw uh, this week. And uh, when I first saw the graphic of Bray Wyatt and him coming through into the funhouse and it was very reminiscent of the Blues, uh, Blues Clues, which I know uh, was in the UK and in the US... Um, it, 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 I, I thought, well, what's this? Uh, you know, are they turning his character into like a, a Brodus Clay type character? Remember, Brodus Clay used to be a uh, used to be a, a, a monster, and then he came back as this kind of nineteen seventies uh, retro dancing <laughs> Barney the dinosaur, essentially. Um, but no, um, when you kind of watch this Firefly Funhouse, and uh, uh, maybe you might take a couple of viewings, it t- certainly took me a couple of viewings, but it's very dark and um, it's been kind of. <sighs> It's been compared to Bray being like a um, a cult leader, um, a cult figure for for children, and um, it's received quite a bit of attention um, from um, all wrestling writers um, and uh, anybody connected with wrestling. And I know that uh, WWE's stockholders um, and sponsors have said that they are not fond of the gimmick, with it being kind of like a, a bit of a, a cult leader for children. I think there was some pressure on the WWE for them to um, change it up, or get rid of the, the Firefly Funhouse and to kind of not show it again, not air it again. Um, however, it sounds like WWE is sticking to their guns because they, they did air the same segment, all 3 minutes, 18 seconds of it again on Tuesday, uh, Smackdown Live on Tuesday. So it looks like they're kind of going to run with this and uh, with the, the, the characters, Mercy the Buzzard and uh, the Witch, and uh, of course Bray um, in his uh, he, he's he's obviously um, he's uh, the new Bray Wyatt uh, kind of he's uh, he's sinned for his uh, he, he's repented for his previous sins um, so uh, yes no more the the nasty heel bad man uh, Bray Wyatt that we had uh, back last year and dating back from 2013 uh, now it's this kind of the fun kid friendly uh, Bray Wyatt but uh, yeah it's dark and it's menacing um, and it's got a message behind it that says uh, yeah I'll tell you who, who else this reminds me of um, the original Doink the Clown so Doink the Clown, everybody loves clowns. Well, a lot of people like clowns. Um, but uh, a clown is meant to be fun. It's meant to be friendly. Um, and uh, But the original Doink the Clown, played by Matt Bourne, yep, he would throw confetti, sometimes water over fans and, and wrestlers. Um, but then he would kind of, kind of flick a switch and have this dark side. And uh, he would be more like It out of the, the film or the, the kind of 90s TV show It and uh he would be um an evil clown and this reminds me very much of of kind of the evil doink the clown um bray wyatt's and they will see that they've had a lot of thought put into this it's certainly a, a change of direction also reminds me a lot of uh wayland mercy who i think the original bray wyatt gimmick was was based on uh wayland mercy was played by dan spivey um right about 94 95 we had wayland mercy and uh, an incredible character, great gimmick, um, some really good segments to introduce Wayland Mercy back on uh, Raw back in the day. And um, I don't think uh, Dan Spivey or Wayland Mercy as the character lasted too long on the WWE. And I remember watching Wayland Mercy when the WWE toured the UK back in '95. And uh, yeah, and I think that that's very much what Bray Wyatt was based on um, but yes bit of Wayland and Mercy bit of the original uh, Doink the Clown in there and of course a whole lot of Bray Wyatt so I'm really really intrigued to see where this goes um, 
my original impression was uh, quite negative. It's like, what is this? Um, but then uh, when you watch it a second time, you really think kind of the, the dark kind of uh, context behind it. Um, it's, yeah, it's intriguing. It's, I'm excited to see where this goes. I can't wait to see uh, next Monday night to see what happens next. I'm, I'm hoping they have another Firefly Funhouse and uh, to see where this leads ultimately with the return of Bray Wyatt in the ring. Um, and uh, yeah, a, a kind of a bit of a, a twist on the Bray Wyatt character with him being more of a, uh, a cult leader for children this time, which could be extremely dark but very very fun to watch and uh, i think it's going to get a lot of people tuning in this week i really do think it's going to get a lot of people thinking right i want to it's it's something that that everybody's talking about so whether you like it whether you hate it people are going to tune in and watch it which is uh, only good for the product only good for the tv show only good for bray wyatt and i think the key to this is wwe need to um they need to see it through to the end they need to they need to, yeah, at last the course, basically, and um, see it through to the end. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Bray himself has a lot of input into this character and a lot of input into the segment um, from Monday night. And, uh, yeah, this I am 100% in on, so I can't wait to see where this leads. I want to talk about some injuries, lots of WWE injuries at the moment, as I said at the beginning of the show, some uh, dating back to WrestleMania, or just after WrestleMania, some more recent. Sheamus has been out since the 9th of April, so the first SmackDown Live after WrestleMania, and he was in a match and apparently suffered a concussion during the match. Now, he's been out for the last uh, two weeks, um, and uh, come this Tuesday, it'll be three weeks, so uh, yeah. Um, we did see Cesaro get drafted to Monday Night Raw, and he's wrestled um, as a singles wrestler. Um, so I, I've heard that it's kind of an end to the tag team The Bar, where he would usually tag with, with Sheamus, of course, and they've been together for the last three years, and very successful they have been together um, as well. Um, I'm pleased for Cesaro uh, that he's getting a, a bit of a push, or seemingly getting a push as a singles wrestler uh, on Monday Night Raw. But um, yeah, Sheamus is out at the moment with a concussion. He's been out for a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully we'll see him back in the ring again soon. Um, I don't particularly want to see the bar uh, rejoin. Um, maybe sometime in the future. But uh, for now, I think they need to kind of go back and test the waters as singles wrestlers. I think that both Sheamus and definitely Cesaro have got a lot uh, more to prove as singles. Then you've got Nia Jax, who's been photos circulating the internet the last uh, day or so. She's just come out of surgery. She's had uh, double knee surgery. Um, it's been a, a lot of wear and tear from her, uh, you know, her, her heavy schedule, her big uh, schedule from um, the last few years, being constantly on the road, uh, being uh, um, in uh, main event feuds. And uh, yeah, it's obviously taken her, uh, you know, its toll on her body and on her knees. And she's had double knee surgery this week, so wish her nothing but the best. Uh, reports are that she could be out for uh, anything up to a year. Um, similar to Tommaso Ciampa, and we've covered Tommaso Ciampa quite a bit. Now, we've seen pictures of him uh, recently doing some very, very light weight training. Now, he's um, had surgery within the last uh, month which uh, obviously kept him out of NXT TakeOver in New York uh, when he was going to be defending his uh, his championship, uh, formerly the NXT champion against Johnny Gargano. That all had to be changed at the 11th hour. Um, it did give us um, a five-star main event match at TakeOver New York between Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano. We all know that Johnny Gargano is uh, the new NXT champion, and uh, we'll be talking more about Johnny Gargano in our NXT review a bit later on. But um, yeah, Tommaso Ciampa, similar to Nia Jax, is going to be out for a year or more then you've got Big E now he's got a torn meniscus um, now this uh, injury was also possibly suffered in the same match as the one where Sheamus got his concussion on the 9th of April um, uh, many people kind of laughed and joked that uh, maybe Big E got injured from doing his uh, splits routine um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes he's out with a torn meniscus and of course the last couple of weeks we've seen Kevin Owens uh, step into Big E's place uh, as part of a new day and of course we all know what happened this past Tuesday when Kevin Owens turned on Kofi and Xavier turned on um, his uh, new day um, 
uh, colleagues, although he'd only been part of that faction for a week before turning on them, uh, and now he's put himself in a position where he's now the kind of the new contender, the new number one contender to Kofi's WWE Championship. Uh, Ronda Rousey, um, she broke a bone in her hand. It was a right hand in the match at WrestleMania against Becky and uh, Charlotte Flair, of course. Um, she didn't uh, show any signs of being injured during the match. She is as tough as nails. Uh, we all know how tough Ronda Rousey is, but but, uh, yeah, there was footage of her being assessed after the match, after uh, WrestleMania. And, um, yeah, she's uh, got a broken hand now. I think that she was scheduled to take some time off. I know that she's got a three-year contract. And for her first year, she was uh, full-time. We saw her pretty much every week. Um, wrestling regularly on Monday Night Raw, as well as every single pay-per-view. And um, I, I thought that uh, she... Uh, you could compare her to Kurt Angle when he made his uh, debut in the pro wrestling industry. Uh, both fantastic athletes, both uh, natural uh, competitors um, of uh, any sort of combat sport, whether it's amateur wrestling, whether it's judo, whether it's inside a cage in MMA for UFC or inside the squared circle for WWE. And just like Kurt Angle, Ronda Rousey took it you know like a, a fish in water and uh, took it like a natural and uh, she had probably one of the best if not the best uh, debut years of any wrestler um, I've ever seen in uh, pro wrestling and I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree with me but I think that for after WrestleMania she was always scheduled to take a bit of a break and of course now with her hand injury she's going to be out for a little while I think that for her second and third year she's going to be more like a part-timer um, so but yeah um, best of luck to Ronda Rousey. Then you've got Matt Riddle, who's been pulled from NXT live shows over the last, uh, well, certainly over the last week or so. I think that it was um, this past weekend uh, when he was when he was first pulled from the NXT live shows. Now he has an arm infection, so no broken bones or torn or pulled muscles or concussions or anything serious. And I think we can all be grateful for that because I think we all know that uh, Matt Riddle is such an important player in NXT and of course the future of NXT and WWE as a whole and uh, Matt Riddle's got an arm infection so um, I'm sure he'll be back very very soon. Daniel Bryan and there's uh, been a lot of people talking about Daniel Bryan uh, he's not been seen since WrestleMania 35 in his match against Kofi Kingston um, and not only has he not been seen, but he's not been heard from. And uh, nobody has been talking about WWE, certainly not from um, the, the front office or the, or the management of the WWE. Um, it's almost as if he doesn't exist or has been wiped from the, the, the face of the earth. Uh, maybe he disappeared when Thanos uh, clicked his fingers in the gauntlet glove. Um, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, uh, there are some serious concerns that um, uh, because there's been no news about why he's out, there are some concerns that Daniel Bryan is injured. There's some, some concerns that maybe he suffered a concussion in his match with Kofi at WrestleMania 35. And um, yeah, we all know that Daniel Bryan was out of uh, action. He had retired and he was out of action uh, for three years uh, because of um, his... Uh, history with concussions and um, that he was essentially forced to retire and uh, when he did return when he came out of retirement he was told that he would be um, uh, impact tested after every single match um, and uh, which is what he's been doing we were told that Daniel Bryan was going to change his wrestling style and slow down uh, and have a more kind of ground based uh, wrestling style uh, we haven't seen that. We've seen the Daniel Bryan that we've always been used to all these years. And he hasn't slowed down. He hasn't stopped taking the bumps. He hasn't stopped taking the risks. He's still doing dives. Um, and he's still taking the bumps um, that kind of gave him the injuries and the concussions in the past previously. And um, there is concern that if he's got another concussion, that he may not be cleared to return. Now, this is all speculation because, as I said at the very beginning, he's not been heard from uh, and, and nobody's talking about him. Um, but the fear is because nobody's saying one thing or another, um, we're not getting any sort of confirmation or any sort of news about Daniel Bryan and whether he has or hasn't got an injury. People are fearing the worst and people are fearing that um, 
you know, you know the old saying, uh, no news is good news. Well, no news possibly um, might mean bad news in this case. Jeff Hardy, um, he was injured on Saturday night in a match against the Usos. So um, there are some reports that he's possibly got a back injury. Um, and uh, on Saturday, he he continued the match, although I think Matt Hardy kind of did a lot of the heavy lifting in the match against the Usos. Sunday, it was reported uh, that Matt Hardy um, tagged with a different partner on Sunday to go up against the Usos again. And uh, Jeff Hardy was on the outside uh, supporting uh, Matt. And then from Monday onwards, uh, Jeff Hardy has been, um, yeah, not uh, present. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a concern that he's kind of suffering a back injury at the moment. Now, it wouldn't surprise me the way he uh, still dives around the ring. He's uh, been uh, uh, taking these uh, these risky bumps for well over 20 years now. And, uh, yeah, there's concern that he's got quite uh, um, a severe back injury. But nevertheless, uh, he's not been seen since the weekend, certainly since Monday. He's not been in the ring since Saturday. Uh, so we shall see if he appears um, on any of the weekly TV programmes, any of the weekly uh, WWE programming this coming week. Um, but yes, and of course, they are currently SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. Um, so hopefully he'll be back in time for them to uh, continue defending their championships and to um, hopefully uh, you know, not have any disruption to their reign as SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Then we've got a referee. Now, this is a, an interesting one. You don't often see referees get injured. Um, or certainly not severely injured, um, but uh, quite often you see referees get uh, uh, bumped, and um, as part of the part of the match, part of the, the story within the match, they will get knocked so that the heel can uh, can uh, do their you know, dirty deeds, their their shenanigans. Um, to attack the, the, the face uh, opponents to get an upper hand, and then the referee comes around. And uh, uh, but but there's uh, this referee Tom Caster. Now he's a WWE referee, and he suffered a broken leg um, as he was officiating a match between Tyler Breeze and the Velveteen Dream uh, for the North American Championship at an NXT house show in Nebraska. Um, and there's been photos circulating of Tom Caster's uh, leg. Um, which um, does appear to be um, in uh, unnatural, uh, in an unnatural position, in an unnatural uh, angle. You can actually see a photo of this um, on the Wrestling with Jonna's Facebook page. Go over there now and, and uh, have a look at that. Um, but Tom Caster is such a professional that he actually completed the match. He was able. So this injury obviously happened towards the end of the match, but he was able to crawl into position to count the pinfall win for the Velveteen Dream. Now, this house show in Nebraska, um, and then he got obviously stretched out uh, to be seen. Um, but uh, yeah, a nasty, nasty injury. So lots of injuries, lots of wrestlers out at the moment. Um, like I say, some some big names there as well. Certainly Sheamus and Nia Jax, Big E, Ronda Rousey, Daniel Bryan. Um, yeah, and uh, obviously they are you know leaving holes within the, the roster on their respective brands uh, the biggest concern of course is Daniel Bryan now all the others I'm sure will will return um, and some of them will return sooner than others obviously we spoke about Tommaso Ciampa and Nia Jax possibly being out for as long as a year but Daniel Bryan is the biggest concern we all know about his history with uh, concussions we all know about his history with uh, head injuries you know, head trauma and uh, if it is confirmed as a concussion, uh, then he could be out for, well, dare I say, he could be out for, for good. Um, we don't want to see that. But if he doesn't get cleared by the WWE medical staff, he's probably not likely to be cleared at all. Let's talk about NXT UK from this past Wednesday. Um, so uh, from the uh, NXT UK from the 24th of April and it was uh, one of the three episodes that was filmed over WrestleMania Access, uh, WrestleMania weekend uh, and Access of course. We went straight into the first match of the night and it was Liguero versus Cassius Ono. 
So uh, in this, the smaller Ligero um, going up against the knockout artist Cassius Ono. So Cassius lays down his authority by cracking Ligero with an almighty big boot, flooring his much smaller opponent in the process. Ligero does manage to come back with the senton off the apron onto Cassius. However, as Ligero rolls um, through from the move, he goes headfirst into the steel ring steps, giving Cassius Ono the advantage once again. Uh, after several minutes of Ono striking Ligero, Ligero uh, does take advantage of a missed senton from Ono uh, before using his speed to take it uh, to the bigger guy, including a springboard splash for a two count for the lead Luchador. Ligero gets another two count from a code red, followed up with a uh, stunning somersault senton to the outside onto his opponent. Cassius Ono, however, uh, proves why he is one of the dirtiest and deadliest players in the game by attempting to rip Ligero's mask off from his face, uh, actually turning the mask slightly so that Ligero couldn't see before nailing Ligero with his rolling elbow for the three count. And that was a good match and a good opener to this week's NXT UK. And of course, we've seen a lot more of Cassius Ono uh, on NXT UK uh, for the last month or so now. Uh, of course, he, he says that uh, with him being a 20-year vet, that he's a you know, master of uh, not just the American style of wrestling, but the European and the British style of wrestling. He's wrestled a lot of British wrestlers and British legends over the years. Um, so uh, he is very, very adaptable. And we're going to be talking a bit more about Cassis Ono when we get to our NXT review a bit later on. Then we see Jordan Devlin. Uh, Jordan Devlin talks backstage about his pended match against the... WWE United Kingdom champion Walter in a non-title match taking place next week on NXT UK. It's obviously another match that was filmed um, over in New York during Mania weekend. Devlin says that uh, he's going to prove Johnny Saints wrong for not giving him a title match uh, against the new uh, WWE UK champion, uh, which Devlin says was to protect Pete Dunne's rematch with Walter at the Glasgow tapings. Devlin finishes by stating that you'd never bet against the Irish ace, and boy do we know that's true. Then we see Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, so they're uh, having their own personal tour of uh, the WrestleMania access area, once again making it clear how to them the mat is sacred. And uh, I've got a feeling that we're going to be talking a lot more about Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner in the coming weeks here on Wrestling with Jonas. Then we see uh, Tony Storm. So Tony Storm is out next for an in-ring promo uh, where two weeks ago she successfully defended a championship against Ginny um, and uh, that uh, she had some uh, killer matches. She said that she had some killer matches with Rhea Ripley. Tony mentioned other wrestlers like uh, Zia Brookside and Piper Niven. Tony says that she plans to be champion for a very long, long time. Just then, as Tony's about to leave, Kaylee Ray comes out for her match, uh, which is up next, and uh, looks Tony dead in the eyes, um, who uh, wasn't mentioned by the champ in her promo. Of course, she mentioned Piper Niven and Zia Brookside and uh, Ginny. Rhea Ripley didn't mention Kaylee Ray, um, and uh, I believe that Kaylee Ray took exception uh, to that. A promo by Tony Storm, and that's possibly setting up a match between Kaylee Ray and Tony Storm in the future, which I, for one, can't wait to see. But Kaylee Ray is up next in the in the next match. Um, she's going up against Zia Lee. Now you may remember Zia Lee from this uh, past year's uh, May Young Classic, the 2018 May Young Classic, and she's part of the uh, uh, developmental in Florida. Um, uh, Kaylee Ray is definitely the aggressor in the beginning of this match, shoving Lee hard into the ring post to take advantage of this match before throwing Zia Lee into the turnbuckle shoulder first. Lee comes back with some solid knee strikes before getting a two count from a martial arts kick. Uh, the match didn't progress much further for Zia Lee, however, with Kaylee Ray executing her widow's peak gory bomb finisher for the fairly easy win against Zia Lee. So, uh, Kaylee Ray definitely showing her dominance here and uh, proving why she is a contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Then we see the grizzled young veterans um, backstage throwing Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan's ring gear, um, including clothing, uh, out of the locker room and into the hallway with Zach Gibson and James Drake looking upset over their count-out loss last week to um, Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams, of course, saying that they are uh, the locker room leaders and they say that Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan can get changed in the corridor. Um, that was a funny segment. You don't often see uh, a reaction or kind of backstage stuff like that where wrestlers uh, lose their temper, lose their rag, uh, throw in their, uh, their rivals' gear around. 
and the line where Zach Gibson said that uh, they're the locker room leaders and Williams and Amir can get changed in the corridor. Uh, line of the week for me. Very, very good. Then we get the main event of this week's NXT UK. Flash Morgan Webster um, teams up with his regular tag team partner, Mark Andrews versus Mustache Mountain. So two babyface teams here. Uh, the last time we saw Mark Andrews uh, was in his match with Noam Dar. With both Dar and Andrews wheeled out on uh, on on stretchers at the end of that match, uh, Dar Noam Dar is still out for the meantime with a knee injury, but it's good to see Mark Andrews back in the ring here after also appearing to get injured during that match. Um, you've got to admit that uh, Tyler Bate and Trent Seven definitely come across as the much bigger superstars as they make their entrance, and I think in general. Certainly, they're 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 pairing as Mustache Mountain and their individual um, successes with, uh, of course, uh, Tyler Bate being the first ever WWE United Kingdom champion, and uh, of course with Trent Seven, former NXT Tag Team Champions. Uh, Trent Seven is, is the current uh, Progress Atlas Division Champion and going up against Walter um, for uh, the uh, Progress Heavyweight Championship at Super Strong Style in May. So I've often thought, however, that, that Flash Morgan would make a better heel with his character. His mod character comes across as much more of a, a heel character, in my opinion, or certainly a gimmick that could uh, get a, a better or a bigger reaction if Morgan Webster was to turn heel and maybe turn heel on his tag team partner, Mark Andrews, sometime in the future. Maybe that's just wishful thinking or uh, um, fantasy booking on my part. But I think that his mod character would get a better and a bigger reaction if he were to turn heel. Um, I also believe that uh, the, the babyface character doesn't, doesn't get the desired response from the fans either. I think that uh, Andrews would definitely benefit from wrestling more singles matches uh, where he can demonstrate his wrestling, uh, his, his high-flying, exciting wrestling style uh, more than he does as part of a tag team. So I think there's a lot more potential to these two being singles wrestlers. Um, you only have to look at some of uh, Mark Andrews' matches in progress uh, to see what he's capable of. And I think that... Uh, Thinking back to his feud last year with Eddie Dennis that culminated in their epic match at Hello Wembley um, for progress uh, last September. Back to the match, uh, Webster uh, eventually gets the hot tag um, in this match with a, uh, a you know from Mark Andrews who had taken quite a bit of punishment from uh, Seven and Bait. Uh, Webster gets the tag in, uh, executes a lion salt on uh, Trent Seven and a springboard drop kick sending Tyler Bate off the apron. We see Tyler Bate go for an airplane spin on Webster uh, before catching Andrews by the legs to perform uh, like a Cesaro style big swing. So he has uh, Webster up on his shoulders, he has Andrews by the legs and he's Big strong boy, of course. He's he's turning the both around with an airplane swing, uh, airplane spin, and a big swing combo, and uh, that was impressive. Um, and I think the fans really really loved that spot. Morgan Webster and Andrews execute a double somersault sent on over the top rope onto Bates and Seven on the outside. Plenty of double team action from both duos in this match, including Trent Seven and Tyler Bates completing uh, their tan tandem slingshot clothesline, half and half suplex double team, which is normally the finisher, with Seven covering Andrews, only to be broken up by a flying sent on from Flash Morgan Webster uh, from more than halfway across the ring, which looked like it hurt Morgan Webster uh, in the process. Uh, Bait and Seven won the match in the end um, in this very entertaining and hard-fought match with their burning hammer and flying knee combo from Seven and Bait for the pinfall victory to cap off this very entertaining hour of NXT UK. So my only kind of uh, comments and criticism really is that um, the WrestleMania Access crowd, and I'm not the only one to mention this, uh, can be kind of, uh, you know, criticised for being a little bit quiet at times maybe they've had a long day of wrestling a long day of queuing up for autographs and photos um, but uh, uh, yeah but I think when the action is hot like it was in moments during this match then the crowd are definitely into it again Remember that on next week's NXT UK, we'll be uh, getting the match between Jordan Devlin and Walter in that non-title match. Um, that will be one hell of a match and one that I'll be covering right here on the Wrestling with Johnners podcast. 
looking at NXT from this week. Uh, this week's episode of NXT starts with a match between Jackson Riker and Humberto Carrillo. So Jackson Riker, as always, accompanied to the ring uh, by the rest of the Forgotten Sons, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. Uh, we've been used to seeing Humberto Carrillo on 205 Live of late, uh, but here he goes up against a more powerful, intimidating uh, and intimidating Jackson Riker. Carrillo gets a one count from a handspring elbow, which only appears to anger Jackson Riker as he pummels Carrillo in the corner. Jackson executes his widow maker choke slam to Carrillo, which Carrillo wisely rolls out of the ring. Now, this would normally be a finisher for Jackson Riker, but Carrillo rolls out of the ring, only to be met by the powerful Jackson Riker, who kind of very swiftly exits the ring and starts to beat down on Carrillo uh, with uh, stiff knees, uh, and then starts to smash uh, Carrillo's head against the steel guard railings at ringside and even into the crowd. The referee calls for the bell to put an end to this match um, and to put an end to the beating of Humberto Carrillo before the duo of Danny Birch and Only Lorkin uh, come to the rescue of Humberto Carrillo, bringing Blake and Cutler into the mix as well. Um, in the end, Birch and Lorkin fight off all three members of the Forgotten Sons uh, while rescuing Humberto, uh, possibly setting up either a tag match uh, between Danny Birch and Only Lorkin versus uh, Cutler and uh, Wesley Blake, um, or possibly a six-man, including Jackson Riker and Humberto Carrillo. Six-man, um, I think, is the way it's heading, but that will be a pretty good match. Um, hopefully we'll get to see that on a future episode of NXT. And that was a hot way to start this week's NXT, with Jackson Riker being uh, put over as an awesome force not to be messed with, as it looks like the WWE have big things in store for this man, Jackson Riker. Then we see Adam Cole get into a backstage co- backstage conversation, not so much of a confrontation, but a conversation with the original bro, Matt Riddle. Cole asks Riddle what he's doing there. Riddle says that uh, he's uh, never seen anyone get as jealous as Adam Cole is over Roderick Strong getting the title match against Johnny Gargano. Adam Cole asks Riddle if he thinks he's funny, and Riddle says that uh, he thinks that it is hilarious, bro. So that is a match that I would love to see Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle, and I'm sure we get to see that um, in a future episode. That will be, uh, yeah. Uh, would, would it be saved for a takeover? I think it's a takeover worthy match. Um, but yeah, I get the feeling that uh, we're going to see uh, some form of match between these two, or some sort of confrontation in a future episode of NXT, or maybe a confrontation later on in this episode. Then we get a match between Vanessa Bourne and Alaya versus Candice LeRae and Casey Catanzaro. Now, this should be a fun match, if nothing else, as a showcase for Casey Catanzaro to show us more of her awesome athletic ability as she enters the ring using her spider monkey climb up the steel ring post before getting into the ring. Candice LeRae, of course, was featured in a match on this week's uh, World's Collide show, Women's Collide. And if you want to hear all about how she uh, got on in a match against Kaylee Ray, uh, then you can catch up with my new YouTube show, The Wrestling Experience Episode 2, which will be premiering on YouTube this weekend. Vanessa Bourne and Elia play the heel tag team uh, while in this match, cutting the ring in half and uh, to really punish Catanzaro in the first part of this match with a range of offence before uh, Casey is able to make the hot tag, bringing bring in Candice, Candice LeRae uh, into the ring like a ball of fury. Lorraine doesn't need asking twice as she goes to work on Vanessa Bourne with a step up sent on, a neck breaker and a lion salt, second rope, springboard, uh, moonsault, uh, just like Chris Jericho used to do um, before hooking Bourne's leg for the one, two, three. So it wasn't a long match um, and definitely, uh, you know, Candice Lorraine made an impact when she got a hot tag. Not a lot of offence from Casey Catanzaro, which is a shame because um, I like her offence. I think she's very unique. Um, I call her the, the Rey Mysterio of the women's division. Uh, this this was a match that only went three minutes and did uh, more to get Larray's offense over and with uh, Candice Larray appearing in this year's Royal Rumble and more recently in this year's Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania, it appears that they have possibly big things in store for Candice Larray. Uh, and it's great um, after spending the majority of her time in NXT as the wife of Johnny Gargano and being by his side in his storyline and his feuds. Uh, now she can truly demonstrate what an awesome wrestling talent she is in her own right. Then we get a recap of Shayna Baszler's beatdown of Kairi Sane in their NXT Women's Championship match on last week's NXT. With Sane being saved by her best friend Io Shirai. Then in the backstage interview, Shirai gets heavily beaten down herself by all three members of the Horsewomen. 
of Shayna putting an exclamation point on proceedings with a wicked boot to the face of Io Shirai, leaving her laying on the floor as the heels get out of dodge. We get a video package of Kushida with his debut match taking place on next week's NXT before we get William Regal, the NXT general manager, who is approached by Cassius Ono. So we saw Cassius Ono in an earlier match on NXT UK uh, against Liguero. Um, however, here, um, Regal con- congratulates Ono on his success so far in NXT UK. Cassius congratulates Regal on his latest acquisition of Kushida, with uh, Ono asking Regal, um, is there anyone on the NXT roster who knows the Japanese high-flying style better than himself, Cassius Ono? Regal responds uh, with, uh, uh, nobody, because you're a genius. Um, And that was a funny line there from William Regal. Uh, These two do have a lot of chemistry uh, when they are backstage in segments like this. Cassius offers himself as a possible opponent for Kushida's first match. Regal agrees and sets, Regal agrees and sets up the match for next week. And it's going to be Cassius Ono versus Kashida in Kashida's NXT debut match next week on NXT. And of course, we'll be covering it here on the Wrestling with John's podcast. Then we get the Street Profits versus, right, is it War Machine? The War Raiders? The Viking Experience? What is it? Who knows? There's even reports that the names are changing again to either the Viking Warriors or the Viking Raiders. We will have to see. This is a non-total match for the NXT Tag Team Championships um, and there's been uh, plenty of controversy over their names here. Um, They are the War Raiders. However, before the match could even get underway, or even before the Raiders could even get into the ring, they are literally jumped uh, on, um, on on the ramp from a massive leaping somersault sent on uh, from the ever-amazing Montez Ford. And he's uh, uh, not just leaps over the ropes from the inside of the ring to the outside, but manages to drop both of uh, the tag team champions here uh, when they are only halfway down the ramp. And that was an awesome Awesome, awesome spot. Uh, something special. Um, you may remember that Ricochet did something similar uh, when he uh, did a, a somersault over the top rope, landed on the ramp to be nose to nose, face to face with the Velveteen Dream before their match. And uh, uh, I think that was uh, possibly at War Games uh, last year, setting that setting that, that match. Well, this was very similar, but uh, his somersault sent on took out uh, both members of the War Raiders. I think uh, uh, Montez Ford is, is such an outstanding athlete um, who is obviously the driving force behind everything that's special about the Street Profits. Uh, but he could be a special player as a singles talent in the future in his own right. Uh, mark my words, this guy is special, and I'm not the only one to think that. Um, Rowe gets uh, into the ring. Uh, the, the referee starts the match. Um, Dawkins uh, nails Rowe with a spear which looked pretty solid before knocking Hanson off the ring apron. Dawkins brings uh, brings Rowe crashing down to the mat with a spine buster before Ford executes possibly the highest frog splash I've ever seen uh, before hooking the leg for a close near fall. Everybody thought that that was it. Everybody thought that it was a, a squash of the uh, NXT Tag Team Champions, but no. There was a kick out. Uh, the fans thought that uh, uh, that was it. They thought that uh, the Street Profits had it. They very nearly did have uh, a squash win against the NXT Tag Team Champions. Roe escapes uh, an attempted finisher from the Profits before tagging out to Hanson, who quickly turns the tide of the match. Uh, and that was a super quick start to the match. In another awesome spot from Montez Ford, he holds the bigger Hanson up in a delayed back suplex for a good 10 seconds before dropping uh, Hanson down to the canvas, getting a two count. Hansen floors both opponents with a handspring back elbow. So for a big guy that must be over 300 pounds, that is uh, an awesome move to see. Every time I see that, um, it, you know, it surprises me. It, it, it stuns me every single time. Rowe then nails forward with a drop kick to the corner. Um, the match ends soon after with their Thor's Hammer tandem finisher on Montez Ford for the win. So that was an outstanding match between these two teams. Montez Ford has demonstrated that he's a, a, a real talent in this match. Um, but the War Raiders, the Viking experience, whatever you want to call them, uh, they get the impressive win here in this excellent tag match. No doubt we will see the Street Profits get their title opportunity um, in the near future. And it wouldn't surprise me if they become the next NXT Tag Team Champions. Look out for Montez Ford, though. Um, I rate him very, very highly. 
Um, it is then confirmed, um, as we said earlier, that Kushida will be making his NXT debut against Cassius Ono on next week's NXT. Uh, that should be a very exciting debut uh, for uh, an exciting wrestling superstar. Then the main event of NXT, Johnny Gargano versus Roderick Strong. So Roddy comes down to the ring on his own uh, to start this championship match against the new NXT champion, Johnny Gargano. And uh, we have noted over the last couple of weeks how there's been some uh, obvious tension between members of the Undisputed Era, in particular Roderick Strong and Adam Cole, especially after Strong was granted this championship match against Gargano instead of Adam Cole. Uh, this match was super quick from the off. Plenty of smooth transitions and chain wrestling between the two to start the match. Uh, Roderick Strong hits a half Nelson suplex on Johnny on the outside on the ring apron as the match goes to the outside. Strong hits Gargano with a gut buster and uh, one of his many backbreakers that he executed during the course of this match, um, which uh, took charge of the match and took charge of the NXT champion before slapping on a, a Gory Guerrero special onto Johnny Gargano. The action goes back to the outside where Gargano reverses a wheelbarrow suplex, sending Strong into the steel ring steps. Uh, Roddy misses a wrecking ball dropkick, allowing Gargano to nail a running sent on off the ring apron onto the outside. Gargano gets a close near fall from a Hurricane Rana super kick combo. There's a spot in the match where Gargano has Strong stood up in the corner, and uh, every time Gargano uh, chopped or hit Strong with uh, an almighty knife edge chop, I'm assuming that it is either gum or spit flew out of his, flew out of his mouth um, into the front row, uh, which caused a reaction from the NXT fans. Um, so much back and forth action between these two amazing, amazing wrestlers. You can easily forget how good Roddy Strong is when he wrestles. Uh, uh, when he wrestles so many tag matches, I remember he very fondly his, his matches and his feud with Bobby Roode over the NXT Championship a couple of years ago when Bobby Roode was in NXT and the NXT Champion, of course, and how good that storyline and uh, their set of matches were. Gargano is finally able to put Strong into the Gargano escape when Adam Cole comes down to distract uh, Gargano. Fish and O'Reilly then make their way down to the ramp, only to be met by the original bro, Matt Riddle. Uh, they... Uh who kind of lays waste to both of those, both O'Reilly and Fish, um, on the ramp, um, only then to be smashed in the mouth for his trouble by Adam Cole at ringside. Adam Cole then goes to kick Gargano, only to strike his undisputed era stablemate, Roderick Strong. Gargano spots an opening and connects with a dive to the outside, taking out the interfering Adam Cole before hitting a slingshot DDT onto Strong um, in the centre of the ring, before hooking Strong's leg for the cover and the pin for victory. That was an awesome match. Possibly uh, the match, not just of the night, but of the week in my books. And a pay-per-view calibre match uh, with uh, Johnny Gargano retaining his NXT Championship in this wonderfully booked match. However, the bigger story coming out of this match is the uh, the, the malfunction at the junction, as, uh, as uh, one commentator might say, for the Undisputed Era. Um, and especially Adam Cole and Roderick, Sp uh, Roderick Strong as uh, and, and, and where this leaves their relationship as a faction and uh, where this leaves Cole and Strong's relationship uh, but as they leave the ring with O'Reilly and Fish uh, kind of keeping the peace uh, they're acting as peacemakers here as they head back to the locker room to end this hour of NXT so that was an outstanding edition of NXT with a, a really strong opener between Jackson Riker and Humberto Carrillo uh, with the uh, involvement of the Forgotten Sons and uh, uh, Lorkin and Birch, of course. Then the, the blistering match between the Street Profits and the War Raiders, Viking Experience, Warriors, whatever you want to call them, followed by this uh, amazing main event match, which uh, uh, not only delivered by the bucket load, uh, the storyline ending um, with the, you know possibly with the breakdown uh, in relationships or the breakdown of the Undisputed Era was a super hot way to end this show. And that was another super hot episode of Wrestling With Jonas. Um, don't forget uh, to um, support the podcast on all of our social media channels, of course, uh, including Twitter, um, at withjonas underscore pod. You can find us on Twitter, of course. Instagram, um, instagram.com forward slash Wrestling With Jonas. Go and check out our Instagram page there, Wrestling With Jonas. And, of course, our Facebook group. Just go out and search Wrestling With Jonas tap on the icon, ask to be part of the group and join in on all the fun um, at Wrestling With Jonas on Facebook. 
And don't forget, you can get in touch with the podcast by emailing wrestlingpajonas at gmail.com. You can listen uh, to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, YouTube, Podcast Addict, CastBox, Anchor, and wherever you get your podcasts. We are everywhere. And uh, if you're listening to us on iTunes, as I said earlier, don't forget to give us a five-star review and uh, to leave us a comment as well. And if you do leave us a five-star review, I will give you a name check on a future episode of this podcast. So that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Wrestling with Jonas. If you did, like I would say, don't forget to hit subscribe and to shout about this podcast. Uh, tell your friends, tell your family, keep listening to Wrestling with Jonas for all of your weekly NXT UK and NXT and WWE and pro wrestling updates. Uh, please don't forget to check out our YouTube exclusive show, The Wrestling Experience. Episode one went out last week uh, and looked, uh, um, you know, looked at all the backstage shenanigans. And all the uh, the requests for wrestlers to leave the leave the WWE to have contract releases. Uh, this week's episode, which will drop on Sunday morning, looks closely at uh, this week's episode of Worlds Collide, which was a women's collide featuring an NXT UK Women's Championship match between Tony Storm, who took on Bianca Belair and Nikki Cross, as well as an in-depth look. I'm going to be ranking the top ten wrestlers in the NXT UK Women's Division. So. You've got the likes of KB Ray, Piper Niven, Zaya Brookside, uh, Jazzy Gabbert, Tony Storm. Can they? Will they be in the top ten? Who will be in the top five? Who will be number one? Check out episode two of the Wrestling Experience exclusively on YouTube. It's my YouTube, my new YouTube exclusive series this weekend. It's going to be dropping Sunday morning. But I'll be back later on uh, next week with another episode of Wrestling with Jonas covering NXT and NXT UK. Um, next Tuesday, um, I'm going to the Inside the Ropes tour, which was originally meant to be um, the spoken word tour of The Undertaker, Mark Calloway. Um, he's no longer doing the the kind of Q and A session or the kind of on the stage um, spoken word section of that tour. He's doing uh, meet and greets. Uh, backstage but we won't be seeing the undertaker in in his place we've got mick foley um who's going to be uh on the stage taking questions from uh, the inside the ropes crew and i'll be there with heather and uh, chris martin otherwise known as half decent um and we will be uh yeah we'll be hopefully doing a uh, an episode on that inside the ropes uh tour and that uh, inside the ropes um yeah spoken words interview tour with mick foley as I said, I'll be back next week with another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. Don't forget to check out the Wrestling Experience on YouTube. And in the meantime, take care and speak to you all soon.